18 buttons, RGB lighting. This mouse screams gaming, but is there value beyond gaming for the desktop power user? Let's find out. Hello everyone and welcome to Tech Fix Flicks. In a previous tutorial, we took a standard mouse and extended its functionality by customising the actions of additional buttons. In this video, we push this to the extreme by using an 18 button mouse, specifically the Red Dragon M908 Impact RGB LED MMO Gaming Mouse. Despite its clear gaming credentials, our intent here is to speed up our non-gaming activities, essentially subverting the device in much the same way that we deployed the Elgato Stream Deck for anything but streaming in another tutorial. For the avoidance of doubt, this isn't a review, nor is it a promotion. We paid cash for the mouse, and other 18 button mice are available. Affiliate links to this and other multi button mice are included in the written description accompanying this video. One factor in favour of this particular mouse was the driver software, which can be downloaded from the link shown on screen now and in the written description accompanying this video. We click on the link labelled Red Dragon M908 Software to begin the download. Once downloaded, we click the upward pointing arrow in Google Chrome to display a menu, from which we select the option to show in folder. The software downloads as a RAR file, which as yet remains natively unsupported in Windows. Should you need assistance in handling files of this type, we've published a tutorial demonstrating three methods by which the file can be unpacked, linked in the written description accompanying this video. The RAR file decompresses to three files, and we click on the setup application to run. Where user account control queries the installation, we click yes to confirm our intention. Novice users can simply click next to accept the default installation folder, although we click browse to customise our installation path. With our customised installation folder set, we also click next. We can optionally customise the start menu entry before again clicking next to proceed. Our installation options are summarised and clicking install commences the installation. Once installed, we simply click finish to launch. We are taken to the main interface window from where we will perform all of the subsequent configuration. Let's zoom in. The main interface window features four tabbed sections, which we'll explore in the next few minutes. The general section features a diagram of the mouse, with the relevant numbered buttons indicated. Side buttons can be configured by changing the view from front to side, and five distinct profiles can be configured and switched between, using the five options in the lower part of the interface. The lowest row allows for the importing and exporting of profiles, as well as resetting to the factory default. The apply button should be used after each configuration change. From the outset, we felt that the pointer speed was insufficient for our needs, and we assumed that increasing the slider would deliver the required result. However, having positioned the slider to the maximum and clicked apply, we felt that the pointer movement was still not fast enough to meet our needs, and we therefore head to DPI instead. Here we see that the profile is running at the lowest DPI setting, and we can either raise the sliders or use button 5 to raise the DPI mode. An additional light illuminates for each increase in DPI, and four lights illuminated indicates maximum DPI. With maximum DPI, we also achieve the required pointer speed. Of course, we can also decrease DPI by pressing button 6 at any time. Although this tutorial isn't concerned with RGB lighting, we'll briefly summarise for completeness. There are eight light modes which can be applied, including breathing, where a single colour fades in and out, rainbow, where the light transitions through the spectrum. Fully lighted, or possibly fully lit, where a single constant colour is displayed. Wave, which is similar to rainbow, but with faster transitions. Go without trace, a faster pulsing spectrum transition. Reactive, which responds to mouse movement. Flash, which alternates between lit and unlit stages. And off, which entirely deactivates the RGB lighting to fly under the radar. We do prefer some degree of illumination, but this mode may be preferable in some professional environments. The jewels in the crown of this mouse are the 12 programmable side buttons. Multiplied by 5 profiles, this gives 60 programmable functions from the side buttons alone. Clicking on a numbered button produces a menu, from which a huge array of functions can be assigned. As well as standard button clicks, we can emulate a single key press, or a combination of two key presses. Expanding the basic menu, we see some common file handling options, whilst the advanced menu deals with window functions and other browser tasks. The media menu allows quick access to media playback and volume control. A hugely powerful option is provided by the macro manager, 
and we'll return to this function shortly. We can also configure buttons for DPI and report rate switching. Returning to the macro manager, we can chain key presses and add delay, allowing complex strings of commands to be recorded and played back in sequence for almost unlimited system control. Macros can be edited and saved before being applied to a button within a profile. So with 12 buttons to play with in our first profile, how will we assign them? The choice is an entirely personal one, but we choose a setup for general web surfing, file handling and control of audio playback. We want to minimise mouse movement for our most common tasks. Closing open Chrome tabs. We begin by opening a number of group tabs as shown in our browser bookmarks basics tutorial, then close them after reading. This typically involves moving the mouse to the close icon then back again repeatedly. This movement can be eliminated by mapping a close command to button 1. Incidentally, corner buttons 1, 3, 10 and 12 are possibly the easiest to identify by touch so are best suited to common functions. Saving web pages. As featured in our tutorial saving web pages as MHTML, we frequently archive web content in MHTML format. Again, to remove the need to move the mouse to the menu bar, we can map to button 2. Refreshing open web pages. With our top row of buttons handling common browser tasks, our second row handles three universal functions. Paste, cut and copy. For media playback, it's logical to have previous track and next track on the same horizontal plane, with previous track on the left and next track on the right. We therefore assign these functions to buttons 10 and 11 respectively. Likewise, having volume up and volume down arranged on a vertical plane with volume up at the top is an equally logical step. We therefore assign button 9 to volume up and button 12 to volume down. That leaves button 7 for media play and pause. Finally, we need to assign a button to switch between profiles, so we use button 8 to reach profile 2. Incidentally, we can only cycle upward through the profiles using a button, and to keep cycling, we'd need to assign a cycle button in profile 2 and in any subsequent profiles. For consistency, this would again be button 8 in our case. With our plan mapped out, we simply need to set the button assignments. We begin with button 1, to which we will assign a combo key. The combo key dialog appears, and we press Ctrl W, which is the keyboard shortcut to close an open browser tab in Chrome. With the combination set, we click OK to confirm. We now see button 1 assigned to Ctrl W. Every time button 1 is pressed, Ctrl W will be sent. If a Chrome tab is opened, it will be closed. In assigning button 2, we again opt for a combo key, this time using Ctrl S as the combination. This will save the current web page in Chrome and will also act as a save option elsewhere. We take a different approach in assigning button 3. This time we opt for a single key press, with F5 being our nominated key. With F5 assigned to button 3, this will refresh our current web page on activation. Buttons 4, 5 and 6 are all assigned from the basic menu, with button 4 mapped to paste, button 5 mapped to cut and button 6 assigned to copy. For button 7, we use the media menu, assigning the play pause function, whilst for button 8, we select the profile switch option from the main menu. We return to the media menu for button 9, assigning the volume up option to this button. Buttons 10, 11 and 12 also use the media menu, with button 10 selecting the previous track, button 11 selecting the next track and button 12 turning the volume down. With all 12 buttons assigned, we need to click apply to ensure that our mapping is confirmed. With that, we are ready to deploy our mappings and achieve our routine tasks with greater speed. At this stage, we've only mapped Profile 1. Profiles 2 through 5 remain available for use and can be configured to our requirements. Furthermore, this demonstration has not used the macro functions, which deliver even greater potential automation options. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you found it useful, please consider subscribing by clicking the logo on screen now. If you'd like to see more, there are two suggestions currently on screen. If you have a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. You're also welcome to follow us on Twitter. Until your next tech fix, goodbye.